Hey everybody, welcome to the, all right, we're going to have to start that again because I like. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the, I don't know what I'm going to You had better edit that out. Oh, there's that one. That's all right, I'll, all just, right. I'll edit that out again. So go ahead and start over in like five seconds. Hey everybody, welcome to the Initiative Project Podcast. This is Kelly, and I'm here with TJ. TJ, Hello. what's going on? What's going on? Well, we are recording this on a nice day. We have a wasp battle with like 10 spiders. Okay, like two spiders. But if you hear a scream, mainly me, um, that's what it's from. So either getting stung by a bee or hoping to God it goes away. I'm closing and this window right we're now. We're closing it. We're closing it. We're trapping him inside. Because, oh, I probably have spiders on me now. That's okay. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, now he's trapped, so we're not going to get stung by the wasp. All right, we're all good. So I live in a really old house. In case you haven't listened to this podcast before, we've talked about my old house where we record this podcast, and there's some bugs and spiders and an occasional squirrel or a bat. So All good yeah, and fun. It's all good and fun. All right, so what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about fat. So when you think of fat, TJ, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when somebody says that word? Uh, the jelly thing around my waist that I look at every morning. <laughs> right. You have like a negative perception, right? Oh, yeah. Just like Arnold Schwarzenegger says, if it, if it jiggles, it's fat. Because <laughs> oh, so somebody be like, I'm big boned. You'd be like, you're not big boned. If it jiggles, it's fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. So, what we're going to talk about today, though, is that not all fat is bad, and that there are actually a lot of people don't realize that there are different types of fat that have different functions. So, the idea that all fat is bad when people think of fat, and, we're, and by the way, we're talking about fat on your body, not dietary fat here. So, we could we could do a whole other podcast on dietary fat. But today we're talking about the fat that's actually on your body. And a lot of people think that fat is enemy number one. We try to burn it, lose it, and stave it off at all costs. We're, we're pretty much like a fat phobic culture. But is all fat bad? Is all body fat bad? So in this episode, we're going to talk about the three types of body fat which ones are bad and good, how to increase the good kind, and why you might need to worry less about body weight or body fat. So why don't we get started with the three types of body fat that can be stored in three different ways. Um, so what are the three types of body fat, TJ? It's a quiz. Oh, we got a quiz. Good thing I have the answer, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> so we have white brown and beige so i have no idea what those are ha, so you, I'm have you never lie. heard of the i have not really i just see it on my waist this is white fat so then know. maybe i'll let you cover white fat since sure. you already kind of know what that is sure so white fat white fat is the type that most people think of because it's the kind that is visible on the body when we gain too much of it so look in your mirror got stuff going on your waist. You got hay and arms. That was an old <laughs> client told me that. She's like, if, if if I wave and there's stuff going around on my on my under underarms. Oh, bingo arms. Yeah, she called them hay and. So you always have that frame, hey and, and you, you see it. That's what that was <laughs> okay. her thing. Um, so this is the kind of fat that we also accumulate around organs, visceral fat. Okay, so the good. Some white is fat is essential for hormone production, including the hormone that promotes satiety from eating, fertility in women, energy stores, and temperature regulation. So the bad part of white fat. Too much white fat is associated with metabolic disease, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, and stroke. I think we should point out here that the, that white fat and having too much of it is associated with, but again, that's those studies are correlation studies, not necessarily causation. And, and towards the end of this podcast episode, we are going to talk a little bit about um, why you don't need to be maybe as worried about 
the amount of body fat you have. So anyway, I'm sorry. Right. No, you're good. Break it in. So right, white fat is also it can also produce its own hormones like estrogen, causing ma- major imbalances in the body. So have you heard of? Have you ever heard of? Man boobs. No, they're called moobs. <laughs> moobs. Okay. <laughs> we call them moobs. So this is why man boobs happen. Because men, if you have excess fat, your fat cells produce estrogen. <laughs> yeah. Well, good thing I don't have moobs. <laughs> I do. They're there. They're pecs, though. They're pecs, not moobs. I want everybody to know that. All right. So, uh, Where's this fat st- white fat stored? So white fat is stored subcutan- subcutaneously, which is under the skin and around the organs. So if you know, usually you can tell pretty easily what is white fat. Yes. Yes. Pretty- if you have a, a lot of it, yes, you're generally going to be able to tell. <laughs> right. Right. Or if it jiggly, <laughs> is that white fat? Probably. Probably. All yes. Right. And actually, in a few minutes here, I'm going to talk about the difference. So white fat um, can be stored subcutaneously, which is the stuff that most people, like if you have a lot of it, you can see it. It's visible. Um, But then the visceral fat is also white fat that gets stored around your organs. um, And there's sort of a way to be able to tell whether you have a lot of visceral fat or whether you have a lot of subcutaneous white fat. But we'll get to that. And you can even look look on a cadaver or something that says like white fat. You can kind of see exactly what we're talking about. There's also body scans that will show you. But I'm going to give you like a visual tool where you will know pretty much right away whether you have more subcutaneous fat or more of the detrimental visceral fat. Okay. Okay. So, so what's the next one? Brown fat. So brown fat is really interesting in that it acts more like muscle than fat. Uh, brown fat actually burns white fat. So this should this should really be making people's ears perk up. Like what? Yeah. If There's I can a have fat br- on my body that can burn off the stuff that people can see. Can you inject brown fat? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Damn. So here's the deal, though. Brown fat is found in the highest amounts in babies, and brown fat is responsible for keeping a baby warm. So my two-year-old, almost two-year-old, has more brown fat. Yes. Anyway. Yes. Well, now, yeah. Adults good. do still have some, but I'm going to get into that in a minute. So the good, brown fat keeps us warm and burns white fat. The bad, as far as as far as I can, as far as the reading I've done, there's really nothing bad about brown fat. It's not associated with disease. In fact, because of its ability to burn white fat, many adults who know the difference between these fats actually try to increase their levels of brown fat in their bodies. How do they do this? Ice baths or cryotherapy. So that's cold therapy or cold showers. Um, Exposure to cold is shown to increase stores of brown fat. So, and um, I, if you listen to some other of the fitness gurus like Ben Greenfield um, talk about cold therapy um, or cold thermogenesis, he actually has a pool in his yard that I think he keeps at 45 or 50 degrees and he will literally just like jump in there and soak in it for 10 minutes, which I mean, that's hard to do. Uh, yeah. I've done the cold shower therapy where you just turn your shower all the way to cold, and, and I've made it to five minutes, but holy crap, is that hard. So you're saying the challenge is accepted to but, do 10 minutes today? T- no, for okay. me? For me. Oh, for you? I'll oh, do, yeah. Go well, I have it. to. I got to work. I worked out. Usually they say after work, I just do a cold shower. It's actually really good for you. But I will scream. Well, yeah. For 10 minutes. Yeah, it, it really kind of sucks. <laughs> so I got a question for you. Can we turn brown uh, white fat into brown fat? You know, this next one, beige fat, um, I think there is some evidence. I don't know about the brown fat, but I think beige fat is sort of like between brown fat and white fat, and uh, studies show that white fat can turn into beige fat. So I would assume that there probably is a link there so that potentially white fat could turn to brown fat. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. So let's talk about where brown fat is stored. 
Um, in an adult, most of our residual brown fat that remains from when we were babies is around the spine, shoulders, and neck. So if you are going to do cold therapy, you're going to want to do the cold shower where it's like it's, it, the shower is hitting, that water's hitting your neck and your spine. This is going to be miserable. <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> like I do it for like 30 <laughs> seconds. I'm like, this is sucks. And I get out. So I'll do five minutes. Ten minutes is too much. You can persecute me later. Five minutes. <laughs> All right. Are you going to cover the final one, which is beige fat? No, you cover beige okay, fat. Because, I'll cover beige fat. Well, because you're talking about if we can convert the white fat into beige fat. Right. That's awesome. Because I'm super smart like super that. Super smart. Right. So, and by the way, the, the colors that are associated with beige and brown fat, that's actually because there is more blood supply and beige fat and brown fat contain mitochondria. Okay. And so that's why they actually have the darker colors. I actually think we should do a podcast about mitochondria because mitochondria are really important for um, fat burning. So we're, we're going to have to do that at some point. All right. Sounds but good. anyway. Let's move on to beige fat. So beige fat is a, is a fairly new area of research. Um, so not as much is known about this kind of fat, but it seems to operate somewhere between white and brown fat. Um, beige fat, like brown fat, can help burn white fat. <laughs> that was like a mouthful. Um, making it a potentially desirable type of fat to have on your body. So here's the good. Beige fat likely helps burn rather than store fat and is probably involved in keeping us warm. Um, exercise and cold therapy seem to increase concentrations of this type of fat. The bad, mm, this is inconclusive. Um, not much is known about beige fat, but it is an exciting new area of research, and I would guess that because it seems more similar to brown fat, that beige fat is probably more beneficial to us um, than, than not beneficial. So. Beige fat is actually stored within white fat. Um, and white fat cells can actually be converted to beige with the right inputs. And those inputs would be exercise and cold therapy. Those seem to be the things that increase the beige fat. So why don't we talk about um, how fat is stored and how that matters to your health. And um, I'm going to cover the first one, and that is essential fat. So what do you think is essential fat? Is necessary. there such a thing? It's necessary. It's necessary. Yeah, right. like there's essential fat around your brain that you Exactly. Need. You got it right on. Look at that. So if you try to make your body fat free, um, because again, we're sort of living in a fat phobic society, but if you were able to actually make your entire body fat free, you would die instantly. We all need some level of fat on our bodies to stay healthy. An essential fat is the fat found in brain, bone marrow, nerves, and membranes that protect your organs. Essential fat also plays a vital role in temperature regulation of the body, hormone production and regulation, fertility, and the, the ability of your body to absorb vitamins. Um, this is why dropping too low in body fat can be so bad. Sorry, bodybuilders and fitness competitors. You're probably doing more harm than good for your body. Well, that's why they say the rebound from that is like ridiculously bad. Right. They say if you, uh, you're doing a show and then you um, kind of just eat whatever, the next day you gain a crap ton of weight. Yeah. You, you, all your water is like all off and it can actually like do a lot of harm to your body. Right. Yeah, which is crazy. Right. Right. All right, so let's go with the next. Um, so we're talking about how fat is stored and why it matters to your health. So what's the next? My favorite, <laughs> subcutaneous fat. That's why I left this one for oh, you. Oh, thank you. appreciate it. So this is the stuff that's stored under the skin and can be composed of all three types of fat. So you have your white, your brown, and your beige. But is mostly white fat. So it's going away or it's getting converted. That's what we're, that's our goal. Okay. My goal. If you're exercising and taking cold showers, remember. Yeah, but now I got to take cold showers. <laughs> okay. So this is the most abundant form of fat on the human body and is the one we worry about the most when we overeat because it's so visible. I mean, hand, arms, you can slap your stomach and it's blah, blah, blah. We don't want that. So some subcutaneous fat is normal and healthy for temperature regulation, hormones, etc. But 
this is the kind of fat that we um, associate with health problems when we accumulate too much of it. Right, right. So finally, we are going to talk, or I'm going to talk, about visceral fat. So this is going to be the third way that fat is stored on your body. And by the way, I apologize if the sound quality changed. We are having some technical difficulties. Again. Again. But anyway, visceral fat. So this is the fat you want to be concerned about for health problems. This fat is stored around your organs, and while some is necessary for organ cushioning, it can also be very bad for health when there's too much of it. So, TJ, you know how some men have, like, really big bellies? Like, beer bellies? Uh, yeah, all too well sometimes. But, like, okay, have you noticed that some men, they have, like, you couldn't do a caliper test on them because you can't really pinch anything. The, their belly's real tight. Yeah, it's super tight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is abdominal, or that is visceral fat. So that's the difference between somebody who's accumulating subcutaneous fat, just mm -hmm. fat under the skin. So, like, I can grab my subcutaneous fat right now. All right, good. good. My, but my belly isn't big, and it's not super tight. So that means I don't have, I have some subcutaneous fat, but I don't have a lot of visceral fat. So if you are a guy or a lady who has a distended abdomen and you can't actually pinch any fat, but it, you're, you've got a large abdomen and, you, and it's like real tight, that means you have more visceral fat. Um, men are definitely more prone to accumulating visceral fat than women, which is why heart disease is a greater risk for men. Um, visceral fat increases your risk for diabetes, heart disease, stroke, artery, artery disease, and cancer. So question. So if the visceral fat is stored around your organs, it's basically just accumulating everything, just pushing everything out. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. But there's also visceral fat. Um, it's white fat. And the more you accumulate, it actually, um, white fat can actually um, emit it's, it's almost like its own thing. It can emit its own hormones and okay. stuff. So um, it messes with your hunger hormones. It messes with your sex hormones. It causes all types of problems. It's not that it just pushes on your organs. Okay, okay. So, all right. So let's move on to this last thing. And this is kind of something that I wanted to talk a little bit about because I talk a lot about this in my blog. And I actually just wrote an article about... Um, whether being overweight is bad or actually it was it was an article on on body acceptance and stuff but okay. so whether or not being overweight is a bad thing we do have an issue in this country 70% of all Americans are overweight or obese um, and being overweight or obese is often immediately associated with being unhealthy and I don't I'm sure you've noticed that like being thin seems to automatically equal healthy right yeah, most of the time. Well, for me, this usually, you know, because of the, the studies that I've done, um, as far as like the reading I've done and stuff, I, it cues a little eye roll in me because um, I've done enough reading at this point where it, it's, it's easy to see that it's not just weight or BMI. So I've been listening to a book recently called The Obesity Paradox, and it's fascinating really how wrong we are on this. So... Overweight and even mildly obese is not necessarily synonymous with things like diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. That is if you exercise regularly. So here's the deal. If a thin or a normal weight person does not exercise, that person is actually at more at risk for heart disease and chronic conditions than an overweight or obese person who does exercise. That's interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So think about that again. Like, I'm going to say that again. A thin or normal weight person who does not exercise it is more at risk for heart disease and chronic conditions than an overweight or obese person who does exercise. This blew my mind. Um, it turns, to, to me, this turns the whole notion of BMI and weight as a health predictor on its head. So, like, why are we even still using these outdated measures? Because they're easy. They are, yes, they are easy. And um, some of these institutions are, you know, they're like dinosaurs. It's hard to change anything, I think. Right. 
Um, in fact, the last time I was at the doctor, my BMI classifies me as overweight. BMI, if, if you don't know, stands for body mass index um, and takes into account only your height versus your weight. So how can it be that I'm classified as overweight? It's because I'm short, but I have a lot of muscle from all of the weightlifting that I do, so I'm heavy. But most people wouldn't tend to look at me and think, geez, she's overweight. Um, all of my blood markers are stellar and I exercise six days a week. So according to um, the, the book that I'm reading, The Obesity Paradox, I could gain enough weight, um, I could become even obese, and I could still be healthy just because I exercise. What you think about that? So that's why I call solve a case of donuts. <laughs> right. Ah, uh, crispy cream. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I exercise, but yeah, no. So I don't plan to do that. I don't plan to uh, to to gain weight or to try to become obese. But I think more people need to hear this. And for those of you who think that I'm advocating for people remaining heavy or gaining weight or whatever it may be, I'm not. But we have an issue in this country where people are, are not able to, they haven't been able to, to, to stem this tide of rising obesity. So whatever we're doing right now is not working for us. Um, the medical model of weight and BMI is not working for us. And regardless of body weight and appearance, I want people to be healthy. Um, it's clear to me that we need to stop focusing on weight as a health measure because our weights aren't budging and begin focusing on the internal health of the body. And if you can be fat and fit by doing 20 minutes of moderate exercise every day, that's walking people. That's all it is walking. Why not start telling people that rather than focusing and saying, Oh, you need to lose weight. So I think the bottom line here of all of this is that heavy or not, we really need exercise to achieve optimum health. And if you're looking to increase things like brown and beige fat, it can help with that. Um, and we need to worry a little bit less about an outdated measure of health, which would you know be weight and BMI. So I don't know. What are, are you have any thoughts on that, TJ? No, I just think that's really interesting that you know you can even be overweight and exercise and still be classified as healthy, which is definitely something I didn't know before. And um, I mean, I just feel like so many people are struggling with their weight and, and again, the doctor will tell them if they ha they're having health issues um, or if their markers are off, they're saying, well, go lose weight. And, and it's like, maybe they, the doctor should be saying, you know, start taking a 20 minute walk every day. Sure. Yeah. Instead of just lose weight. Okay. Well, what do I do first? Let's just right. go for a walk. Right. Right. So. And you might lose weight anyways. Just in, as right. Just if you if you work on making your body healthier, instead of focusing on just dropping weight, um, your your weight may naturally come down as a result of just doing the right things. Perfect. Well, I think that's it. I think that's all we covered today. Yeah, we covered uh, we covered fat. Not all fat is bad. All fat is white. <laughs> maybe we'll, maybe on you it will be converted to beige i've got lots of the beautiful brown fat um, okay <laughs> all right all right well until next time guys we'll see you later bye hey everyone this is tj and kelly with the initiative project podcast if you like what you heard please like comment and subscribe and if you have any questions you'd like us to cover please email us at initiative p podcast See you next time.